I feel like already then we've been knowing each other, right? Yeah. It's some kind of low. Sure. <laughs> like this better. So what's up, y'all? <laughs> so uh, she introduced me. I mean, but we all kind of been breaking bread together the last couple of days, and um, I'm just so happy to be here with y'all. Like I said, I want if anybody want to stay in touch with me, please. However, I can help. I'm here. Um, she introduced y'all a little bit about, about the culture. Um, I'm Chef BJ Dennis, born and raised in Charleston, South Carolina. Have a lot of family up top, up here. A lot of family in New York. I don't even know because if you know about our culture, they say, especially in Harlem, was a little Charleston where I'm from. And most of the people during the Harlem Renaissance stuff came from down south. A lot of them stayed in Harlem. So there's a big kind of Harlem, Charleston connection. A big Charleston NY connection in, connection in general. But Gullah Geechee culture is one of, the few, one of the first, I guess, quote unquote, new cultures of what we call the new, new world. There's nothing new about this world or this, this place been here before colonizers and da da da. And we can go deeper than that, but we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about the Gullah culture. Um, Gullah culture basically is a language have y'all heard about Creoles and New Orleans and stuff like that? Very similar. No, we don't talk, I don't talk with the typical Southern, like you hear Nicole's accent is a very typical deep Southern accent. We have a more of a, kind of a, almost like West Indians, in a sense. I don't know, when I get animated, you can really hear it. Um, there's certain words we say in our culture that is directly to West Africa that we say every day. I mean, who call a mama, mama? Do y'all know that that came from West Africa? That means mother. So a lot of the West African phrases that we say in the Gullah culture, our language is a Creole language. A lot of people don't really speak it no more. A lot of the elders, we were told not to speak it. My parents, you told my parents they were Gullah Geechee, there was a fight. Because it was a thing of ignorance. Oh, you need to learn how to speak properly. Oh, don't say in it. But we say, what are you doing? What are you doing? Where are you going yet? Um, we were like, them boys stupid in it. You know what I'm saying? Them boys stupid in it. That's just like, right? But we were told not to say these words. We, don't, we were told not to say scrape and scrape. Because when you come from, when our ancestors came from West Africa, in the tribal, pigeon tribal languages, there was no t sound. So nobody was saying street or straight. So back home, people were so isolated. Even during the colonial days, the city where I was from back then was majority free and enslaved people. So they kept hold of a lot of traditions. A lot of language, a lot of food. Y'all got to see that yesterday with the rice that we ate, that we cooked, the okra stew. Those are things that are indigenous to the culture. Um, I started off about five years ago really pushing this. It was something that I really didn't think about. I just saw, saw a lack of representation in the city for the culture. Like, they will always sell our own culture, but we couldn't sell our culture. So you come to Charleston, this is the number one tourist city, quote unquote, in the country. Some people say in the world, I mean, that's BS. You know, that's not real. The reality in my city is we're still struggling with our school systems. The same issues y'all see up here, we have back home. 
but they like to put a mask over everything. Same thing we do up here, right? Put a mask on everything. When the reality is, we're still fighting for our, our, our freedoms, we're still fighting for equality, and back home we're still fighting for rights to, to, to push our culture. So, anybody familiar with Gullah Geechee culture? I know we talked about it a little bit, but have y'all heard about Gullah Geechee before? Y'all heard about Geechee people? No. I don't want to sound like childish, but I know when I was younger there was a show called Gullah Gullah Island. Yes. Yes. So Gullah Gullah Island is a, a fictional reality. The people who ran that show were really Gullah people. They actually were just in New York doing something. Um, very good people. I know them personally. I know the daughter personally. Um, Gullah Gullah Island. Gullah culture. Okay. It's a Creole language. Some of the same Creole words you hear Jamaicans say, like nam, eat, we say that too. So it's basically the Creole languages that came from West Africa. These are West African words that were kind of English or like Haitians speak Patois. That is French Creole. That is, but they say Africanisms in the French, in the French language. Same thing with the Gala. We speak, like, if you hear somebody speak pure Gala, I don't even understand it. There's a few words I can say, like cracking we teat like this year. Cracking we teat is talking. We cracking we teat, talking to each other. Like Kuda, it's a turtle. Um, y'all heard the word Baba before? When y'all think about Baba, what are you thinking about? <coughs> What's that? That's a good point. And typically back home, when they, somebody say Baba, they're thinking of a typical, we would call a redneck, white southerner. But Baba also means boy, boy in West Africa. These are words that came with us. We don't understand that most of the slang we use, the e quote unquote ebonics, come from real pidgin languages. Like we say, boy, where you at? Where you at? Where is it? You know, these are things that we do back home that we still cherish. That now we're like, no, fuck, excuse me, fuck what y'all say. We gonna do what we do. We gonna represent ourselves. And, and I'm gonna get to a point. Don't ever conform who you are. You gotta play the game, but don't conform who you are. We all gotta navigate through this little system that they got us in, right? But don't conform who you are. So I started off doing this, I started off cooking. I'm 39, started off cooking 20 years ago. I'm a college dropout, yeah, flunk out. Partying, I hustled, wasn't really paying attention, wasted my parents' money. So I had to start working in the kitchens. I was a dishwasher, a bus boy, food runner, went to a local trade school, had to pay my parents' rent, had to also pay for my, also my school. And from that point, I just started working. And I'm still hustling. It don't stop. But my passion has gotten me this far. For the last five years, I said, I ain't working for y'all no more. And let me say another point. Don't be scared to work for somebody, but learn the game. You know what I'm saying? Everybody can't be an entrepreneur. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because everybody has different variables. You got kids you gotta take care of. You know what I'm saying? But you might be teaching your kids to, to be the next big entrepreneur and whatever. Like my father, I always thought could be an entrepreneur. He, this man could work on cars, could do whatever, but he would always work for people. I saw that and I said, you know what? I want to do something different because we have an entrepreneurial spirit in all of us, but all of us can't always work for people because of situations. You may have family, you may have kids, there's necessities, but you may be raising the next big time tech person. There's so many things out here for y'all. But I know most of y'all foodies, y'all want to get into the food world, right? Listen, follow your passion, follow your dreams. There's so many different variables now. You don't have to be in the kitchen. You know, like, I'm gonna point out the sister right here, because when she went to the garden, she was like, oh, boom, 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 boom. That's her passion. She needed to take that and figure out how to work that passion. Everybody has a passion inside of them, right? Something. It could be you like to do YouTube videos. You can flip that into food sessions, right? You and your, you and your people get on the camera, y'all mix and mingle out there bugging on the camera, right? And y'all can be selling those type of things. Look outside the box. Look bigger than what's in front of you, and that's hard, right? Sometimes when you're living in a situation in life and certain things in front of you, it seems like a brick wall, but there's always bulldozers right there with you. If you got the right energy, the right passion, somebody gonna help you bulldoze those walls down. 
Or you can kick the wall down yourself and keep it moving. But follow your passion, follow your goals. And that's what I did. You know, I was like, you know what? Let me tell y'all. Five years ago, right? I started doing my own little thing. I was like, man, I want to start catering. There's no, re no representation of my culture and my city. I started catering. I had a part-time job. I got, like, a year in, I got two big catering gigs back to back. Like, I put a couple, you know, a couple stacks in the pocket real quick. I was like, yo, this is it. So I quit my part-time job. And for the next three to four months, I had shit. <laughs> Literally, right? Couldn't move back in my parents' house because my parents were raising my little sister four kids. I couldn't pay rent for three months straight. And my landlord, I was late with my rent. My landlord, like, that was it. I was like, yo, what am I going to do? I thought I was going to be on the streets, right? But somebody was there for me because they saw what I was doing, the passion. People watching what you do, they might not say nothing to you, but people looking. If they see you working hard, they looking. My cousin was there for me because I was like, where am I going to move at? Where am I going to live? What am I going to do? She didn't let me move in, and for the first six months, I was like slow, I had nothing going on. She was like, yo, we got to figure this out. I kept faith in me, and next year, you know, I kept rolling. I got more gigs. I got a contract with a local hospital, and now I'm back on my feet. It's not easy, y'all, but people will be there for y'all. I promise. I promise. So don't think that it's the end all, be all. After y'all leave this program, Remember this, like, you got to continue to push your passion. It's, look, it's hard. It ain't easy out here. Believe me, I'm still hustling. Ain't nobody giving me nothing. If I was, if I was back home, if I was one of those white boys back home, I would have been had investors say, yo, here's a couple, couple hundred thousand, let's open up something. But it ain't like that. So I got to continue to push my narrative. Don't stop. You know, it's hard, yo. I know it ain't easy. But I believe in all, yo. Oh, y'all got something special. Every one of y'all in here. I, I watched that. Every one of y'all in here got something special. You know what I'm saying? You may not think that, or people may not tell you that every day, but I'm telling y'all that. Just being around y'all, every one of y'all got something special. Everybody. No matter how hard it is, yo, everybody got something special in them. You know, it just takes the right environment for that to be brought out. So, oh, we got the little... We were talking about the Charleston kitchens, the Caribbean kitchens, so I left Charleston in 2004. We were talking about the Charleston kitchens, the Caribbean kitchens, so I left Charleston in 2004. Um, I worked in all kind of high-end kitchens, right? I started off as a busboy, food runner. I worked my way up through the, you know, through the ranks, fry, cook, saute, working grill, working in these really great kitchens. I left Charleston in 2004, I moved to the Virgin Islands. Um, I had a connect there that wasn't like, like family to me. I moved down there. End up going down there, was the worst person I ever met in my life. I was in St. Thomas with nobody by myself, two months in, in the streets. Found my way through, got with good people. Four years later, I was back home, successful. Went back to work for people in Charleston. And for, I had, you know, and there's, listen, there's nothing wrong with working for people. There's nothing wrong with that. But at the same time, if you got a passion to do your own thing, learn from them, ask questions. That's what I did. I was like, if I'm gonna be working for you, I'm gonna ask questions. I'm gonna be like begging and what you, how you do this, how you do that. Don't be scared to ask questions. Because when I came back to Charleston, I was working for people. And then I was like, no, I'm tired of it. So I went from the Charleston kitchen to the Caribbean kitchens to my kitchen. Now I do my own thing. And that's always how it's gonna be for me now. I can't go back. But everybody has a different role in life. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has a different rule. And don't be afraid of what somebody else got to say to you. If you're doing bad, they're going to talk about you. If you got all the money in the world, they're going to talk about you. It don't even matter, yo. People are going to say something about you no matter what. That's life. Don't study them. Do you. Don't worry about what the crowd doing. Don't worry about what everybody else got to say. The more on the block, they're going to talk no matter what. That's just how we roll, you know? Don't study that. Do you, don't be ashamed about what you're trying to do because ain't nobody else walking in your shoes. Nobody else walking in your shoes. They going, like I said, they gonna talk regardless. I still, I still get shitted on, whatever. I'm putting money in my pocket. You ain't doing that for me. And people, the right people gonna come around y'all. Um, TV, I was in New York Times, all that stuff. That stuff don't matter. This is what matters to me. I done been on Food Network. I done been on Guys Grocery Games. It was fun. 
I know y'all watch Food Network. I've been on Guy Grocery Games. And I was on the Anthony Bourdain show. I've been on a couple other shows. That don't mean nothing. Because guess what? Ain't nobody after them shows say, hey, here's a couple, couple grand. Let me do something for you. It was like, oh, you on the show, cool. You gotta realize this right here is still a handicap. But it's not a handicap for us because it's a power thing because this is powerful. What we have is powerful. And that's why they fear a lot of it. That's why ain't nobody giving me nothing. So I'm just taking it. You gotta take it, y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, go hard. Go hard. It's frustrating some days, yo. It's, I'm not always the, every morning waking up, I ain't always the happy. I'm happy to be alive. But you know, that's the, the, the human existence. You can't have happiness without sadness and vice versa. You won't go through it. But remember this, when you wake up every day and you walk and you're breathing, you got life. No matter how frustrating it can get, you gotta continue to push, continue to strive. I'm not where I wanna be yet. Still looking for to get into a building, you know, still looking to, you know, I'm, I'm still hustling out here. Catering life is like, I'm hustling. So when I get back home, I got clients to get to. It's a hustle. But I love it. And if you love something, you will succeed. You have to understand that it's in every one of y'all in here. I mean, I've been around y'all. Y'all make me laugh. You know, when I see some of y'all having a bad day, I want to give you, what's up, you good? Because I'm here to support, man. We here for each other. At the end of the day, we all we got. We all we got. And people are here for y'all. If they see that you really want it, somebody's going to be there for you. And it's going to be somebody you don't even expect. If you rocking hard, they're going to rock with you. Believe that. Do not give up on yourself. Do not give up on your passions. Do not give up on life. Push. It ain't easy out here. Like when we say out here, it ain't easy. It ain't easy. Believe me, I'm a testament to it. I'm a testament to it. I thought I was going, like I said, I was got these two big gigs. I was like, oh, I'm gonna quit my little part-time job, my little safe, safe haven. Couldn't pay rent. It was like one of the coldest winters back down south. You know, we don't deal with the cold like that. I had no, my landlord ain't fixed my AC, and I had no heat. I couldn't pay no rent. Later on, I mean, late on rent every month. She put me out. I was like, damn, I could have, right then I could have been like, man, I'm going back to work for these people. Nah, and then somebody was there for me. Somebody's always going to be there for y'all if y'all have that good energy. I believe in energy. Good vibes. Listen. Every one of y'all in here have something special. Every one of y'all. Y'all don't hear that every day, right? But every one of y'all here have something special about y'all. There's something beautiful. And some of y'all may have not even found out what that is yet, but it's in y'all. It's there. Follow your dreams, follow your goals. You know, if you got kids, you got responsibilities, you might not be able to do your own thing, you gotta work for somebody, but take ownership. You know what I'm saying, take ownership. Because guess what, you could be running a whole corporate entity, you could be running a corporate catering company, you could be running several farms, you could be doing all this, there's nothing wrong with that. Everybody's not an entrepreneur, everybody can't be on their own because of situations, but it's in every one of y'all to be successful. Every one of y'all here. Everybody has something special about them. I keep saying that, right? Because I believe that. It's, it's a beautiful thing. Every one of y'all in here. Anybody got any questions? Anything you want to say? Yes, in the back. Okay. I realize that coming into the world, a lot of from the person that they look up to. Sometimes it would be family, sometimes it would be friends, or sometimes it would be a mentor. In your professional opinion, have you ever experienced someone that you honestly looked up to that discouraged you or hurt you to the point where it kind of tainted your passion? What did you need to overcome? And what mm -hmm. advice can you give to us in the future if this was to happen? 
Well, that, if that person, if somebody discourages you, then somebody else is going to be there that, that, that believes in you. You know, sometimes, sometimes people you look up to, I, for, for example, I won't say my father was discouraged with me. He was like, you cooking? Like, you cooking? Like, what is that? You know, like when I, like, when I flunked out of college, right, and I had to be in the back of my parents' house, and I started cooking, my daddy was like, what you doing? You cooking? He, I won't say he believed in his son, but he could not stand what I was doing. But guess what? I'm going to do me, because this is what I want to do. So now, he's like, wow, he's proud. Because he saw how much I continued to push and said I wasn't going to settle. I wasn't just going to be sitting there and just be a regular, just, just cooking. You know, I wanted to work my way up. And I think a lot of times we, we, get, we settle, we get complacent. And I wasn't complacent. So now my, my father's my biggest fan. Um, you won't get discouraged. You know, there's going to be people who tell you, oh, why are you doing that? People who you love, you can't do that. Well, because they can't do it, don't mean you can't do it. You do you, right? No matter what, do you. It don't matter what they say, do you. Um, other than that, like, I've, I've worked with chefs. I've worked with chefs who have pushed me, and I've worked with chefs who were just straight up assholes. Like, like, dude, you need, to, you need to get a life. You know, just like, ridiculous. But you know what? You navigate through that. You know, you don't let nobody belittle you or, or treat you some type of way. You know, some chefs are just like, I mean, y'all work with y'all work with chefs. Some chefs are like, blah, 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 blah. you know what? Let that. Okay, that's a moment in time. Don't get caught up in moments in time. Don't let a moment in time discourage your day, discourage your week, discourage your month. Because people are always going to try to quote unquote shit on you, right? The everyday thing. Well, if something's an everyday thing, and the environment ain't right, I say I advise you to move on, you know? But at the same time, if it's, if it's something that you have to fight through, you fight through it because it's still a moment in time. Because how long a day in that day you with that person? They ain't sleeping, they ain't sleeping in the bed with you, right? They wake up with you the next morning? Nah. You had, sometimes you had to have in your mind like, you know what? That person got issues, and I feel for whoever sleep with them at night. You know what I'm saying? So you just let that, it's almost like you have to have that mental fortitude to be like, you know what, whatever. That's just who the person is. They miserable, they miserable. You know, as long as it's not physically disrespecting you. You know, I know mental, mental um, abuse can be hard. But sometimes you have to say, you know what, that person has issues. Let me keep doing me and doing my job right and fight through. That's the, that's the hard part. I think sometimes mental abuse is harder, than, is, I won't say worse than physical abuse, but almost just as bad. But sometimes you have to fight through. I had chefs who, listen, I had a chef who had an alcohol problem. I remember one time I came to work. I don't know if you had the same thing, like we gave you a 15 minute grace period to be at work on time. I was, at that 15 minute grace period, I walked in the, in the kitchen, this dude started cussing, you're late, blah, blah, blah. Put the knife out, what the hell? I was looking at this dude, and this is before service. It's like, you know what? People like that ain't gonna last anyway, because guess what? Three months later, he was gone. His energy was like, get the fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? So you just had to fight through it. Some people, it's like that. You know, some people like that. You, you, and, and, and you have to be strong here. I think that's, 75% of this is mental. The other 25% is just cooking. That's the easy part. The cooking is the easy part. The mental part is the hard part. Sometimes a chef trying to break you down to make you better. You could be cooking and the chef like, so what's that? Where does this vegetable come from? What farm does it come from? What kind of oil are you using? Why are you in the middle of a busy push? Because they want to build you to be stronger. You may think, Man, why are you bothering me? But sometimes you have to have this mental. 75% of it is mental, 75%. Any other questions? And then we done, we done, so the thing is, we done had our Q&A with each other. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like. <laughs> See, I'm just talking a little bit about living in a Caribbean and how that is going. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, being from home, right, being back in Charleston, right, like, Charleston is different than the rest of South Carolina. It's very different. Um, the culture is different. 
the way we speak, the food we eat is different than other parts of the state. Um, you know, growing up, we didn't really realize what we were. In a sense, like, I kind of, I knew it. And for us, it was more like a thing, like, oh, like, my homeboys went to, like, who go off to, out, out of town, go out of state. They would be out and they'd be like, man, everybody loved the way we talk, you know, da, 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 da. They call us Jafakins and all this stuff. And da, 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 man, the boy, them. I live in St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. Oh, VI, UVI, yeah, all right, all right. Um, so put it this way, I, when I went to the West Indies, when I went to the Virgin Islands, that's when it hit me, like, whoa. Because I would be talking like, you know, we'd be out, you know, partying, and have a few drinks, and when I get animated, that, it really comes out, right? And my partner was like, they went in front, she's like, dang, where he from, Down Island, he from St. Lucia, he from Barbados? And I was like, nah, I'm from Charleston. I didn't think nobody knew about it. And I was surprised that the amount of Haitians and Jamaicans and people, because St. Thomas is full of influx of people from other islands. And they would talk to me about my culture. Back home, we didn't really talk about our culture. It was something that was almost like, for the older generation, it was almost like a, a, a thing of disgrace. Like I said, if you call somebody Geechee back in the day, it was a fight. Um, I went to St. Thomas, how much they embraced in the West Indies, how much, you know, you embrace your culture. You know, here in America, they try to make us so Americanized. You have to speak proper and da 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 and da 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 to make it. I'm in the West Indies looking at TV and TV shows say Indy River. Right, right. Spelled Indy River on the TV. You ain't gonna see that really here too much. I'm in the West Indies looking at TV and TV shows say Indy River. Right, right. Spelled Indy River on the TV. You ain't gonna see that really here too much. So, I'm in the West Indies and people telling me about my culture. That influenced me so much. Actually, living in St. Thomas is probably the reason why I'm sitting here in front of y'all right now. Because it pretty much told me to embrace who I am. Embrace who y'all are. Embrace who y'all are. Not just as people from Brooklyn, Brownsville, New York City. Y'all are worldly people. You have a world mind state. Y'all can live anywhere. This career field could take y'all anywhere in the world. I promise you. I promise you. Yes, ma'am. We have to run out of hustle everywhere. But things are very, can be very limited down south. You know, so that's why a lot of the old school cats will have all these old junk joints. Because one thing we have down south is people got land. People own, still own a lot of land. But just because you got land don't I mean you do nothing with it. But a lot, back in the days, people would open up the little juke joints. People used to come down south, up north. Like I, just, I got some old, old heads back home who tell me, oh yeah, we used to come up to 125th in Harlem with the watermelons in the 50s and 60s. You know, people had to hustle. Hustle no matter where you at. In the south, west coast, Japan, you gotta hustle. You know what I'm saying? It's a hustle. It's a hustle and it's a mental hustle. It's a mental game they playing out here with us. To break you down, you know what I'm saying? Don't let it break you down. Any other, any other questions? Like I said, we had our Q&A. Like we should have been recording this one. We went in the kitchen with you and all this vibe. Right, you gotta refresh me. You gotta refresh my memory on things because I, I mean, I'm five years into what I'm doing now. Um, pop-ups, y'all familiar with pop-ups? Pop-up shop, pop-up restaurant? Like a chef take over a restaurant? Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, me and Shamika, Shamika Rachel Hayley, thank you. So, we was like gonna like, do like a pop up shop. Like, we was asking MJ yesterday, like, we like, 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 like this space and like, he was here. Just to like get back. But this will be like my first pop up shop. Like, what advice would you give me? Keep it simple. Um, <laughs> don't conform your food, do you. But I tell you what a pop up will do. It will start giving you recognition. Invite a, uh, invite a few like prominent food bloggers or writers. You know, use your assets here. You know, like yesterday, I think it was a guy from New York Magazine. When I mean, you got what? See them here recording now? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You do your pop up, use your support system that you have here. And when you do your pop ups, right? Make sure you go out there and say, yo, I cater. And you cater, right? You got your cards. I can, you want to taste my food? They're like, oh, I love this food. How can I get more of it? Hit them with that card. I cater. That's how I started building my brand. I started off with pop-ups. 
You start with the pop-ups and you just don't cook. Just don't be like, oh, I'm cooking. You gotta get out there and like, kiss hands, shake babies, you know? Yeah, boom, 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 boom. So you take over, like say like, for instance, we did a pop-up yesterday. Oh. So yeah, so you, so like, okay, say for instance, you, um, Take over a restaurant, a 30 seat restaurant. It's your, it's your thing for the day. It's your menu, it's your food. You got your team in there. Sometimes the restaurant will have a team for you too to help like front of the house stuff. And you doing your food. And then if, if it's in the right environment, you will get a lot of notoriety. But you also gotta get out there and say, yo, here's my card, I cater, personal chef. I used to cook for some dude in the Hamptons. I think this dude was like one of the first Medical brokers on Wall Street. I was on a $60 million property in Southampton. This dog like, damn. You would never think this dude had money. Met him in Charleston, met him back where I'm from. And I did, I did you know, stuff like that, because he tasted my food at an event. So he brought me to the Hamptons. You know, paid me really well, too. So it's about putting yourself out there. You gotta put yourself out there. You can't just be in the shadows. Yes, ma'am. You selling food. You selling food. You selling food. It could be a it could be a private event. It could be a public event. I think sometimes selling tickets, starting off, could be the easiest route. Because you know you can you can you know how much money, how much food you need to put out there. Uh, you know how much stuff you need to buy. You know how much staff you need. Um, when you do a open pop or you call it a la carte thing and anybody just can walk in, it's sometimes harder to control your money. When you do a private event. You say, I'm selling 30 tickets, you know, you know where your profit margin is going to be. You say, I know I can't do X, Y, Z, and this is how much I want to make, it's the food cost. Um, it's all about numbers. Like, that helps out a little bit? You got something special. Sweet potato wine. Stop right there. <laughs> Stop right there, no, no, I'm telling you because you, that's what I'm saying, everybody has something in them yeah. that you can take and push. You do. You know what I'm saying? And next thing you know, next thing you know, you got some company who want to help and make sure that you get the right type of contract. They ain't using you or, or taking your 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 your, uh, your intellectual property, what we like to say. But you get the right people around you to make sure that you got a good contract with somebody. You could have that face on a bottle of sweet potato wine. You know what I'm saying? Everybody has something in them. That's the point we made earlier. You gotta take that and run with it. Yes, sir. How do you advertise for a company? How do you get the word out there? So, if you're doing it with, uh, say you were doing it here, you have them help promote it. You put them promote it on your social media. A lot of times, if you can do a pop up at a very popular restaurant that's maybe closed on Monday or Sunday, and you work with them and they PR company or they, or their advertising team to help promote your event, that's a good way to go. A very good way to go. Um, doing it somewhere that you know is very like popular, that may close on Monday, Tuesday, or Sunday, or whatever day they close. If they're not seven days a week, like the key is like a restaurant that's not open on a certain day, and they allow you to come in and take over, and you work with them to help promote. And then if you and when you do these events, right? Say your say your end goal is I want to be a personal chef, or I want to be a private chef. You make sure you say, if you want to taste my food, here's my card, I cater, I'm a personal chef, I want my, you want to taste more of this wine, I make this wine, here's my card. Just don't cook and be in the background. You gotta, you, you, you gotta, you gotta wiggle out there. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do a little one too. So, yes, yes. Yes, sir. What's the one dish that you had to make so often that you want to throw it down somebody's throat, but... <laughs> Hmm. Things wash. Cause I know I'm making fish and every day. I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know what? You know what? What y'all did yesterday? Cutting up a lot of okra. So we do a dish back when we do uh, we do shrimp and okra. So we like cook it all together and put it over rice. One of my favorite things to eat. But when I'm peeling shrimp, fresh on the waters back home, I'm like, God damn. <laughs> peeling this shrimp, peeling this shrimp, cutting this okra. I'm like, damn. But guess what? 
it's a, it's a dish that you probably sit back one day and say, you know what, I like that. You know? That's one of my favorite things, but when I got to do it in bulk, and I'm like, man, I'm peeling five pounds, I'm by myself, peeling this shrimp, cutting all this okra. It's like, why am I doing this? Until I cook it, and I'm like, yes, <laughs> yes. That's, it, it, it's, it's, it's one of those things, but it's a labor of love. Yes, sir. Mmm. A -hmm. long day of working. Don't say like the cheese. Um. Wow. Like after you know, like man. Sometimes after a long day of working, you just want to go out and get like a piece of chicken or something. You know what I mean? Like I don't even really. Sometimes you don't want to cook, but like if I can come home to a pot of grits and shrimp, shrimp, short shrimp gravy or some grits or just like some white rice and a little salad, I'm happy. Any other questions? Personality. You know, like lo like low like low key for me, I'm really low key laid back, like chill. I don't know if y'all saw that yesterday, yeah. but I'm also real jokey. I know y'all probably saw that too, right? Yeah. Like I'm real jokey. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm real jokey, but it's something that comes out of me when I'm in front of a person and like, you gotta, you know, have, you know I'm talking about? Not being arrogant or nothing like that. Just making people smile. I think if you can make a person smile when you talk to them, it makes the food even taste better. So I think personality and not being, you know, like scared to, reach out to people and be like, how you doing, how you like the food, make them smile. So you gotta have a little personality, what they say, slow swagger, low, 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 one, two, you know what I mean? But what if you try? You, you, got, you, you, about to make, you making me smile now by smiling at me. Yeah. I'm for real. Smile. <laughs> for real, real. You, you know, some, some job you'll see before you even get that job, or you go and, you know, you gotta do a little preview for them before they hire you. You're like, yo, everybody up here all <laughs> looking at each other, they ain't talking, everybody all serious. That ain't your vibe, that ain't your vibe. You will find your vibe. Just don't take a job because, and this, and this is a tough thing to say, I'm taking a job because I need a job so bad. If you ain't about to be on the street, don't conform to just anything. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, don't get me wrong. You may have to sacrifice. You may be like, damn, I got to take this job. These motherfuckers ain't shit. <laughs> but you know what? I'm a, at that same time, while you in there, you plot in your head, I got to get out of here. I got to get out of here. And something will fall in place for you. Man, divine intervention is a mug. It's real. Energy is real. But you ain't got no question? You can be all talking about all that mess yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> nah, but it's nothing but love, y'all. Like, um, I'm here for any one of y'all. For real. I didn't bring, I talk about cards, I didn't bring none of my cards. But if anybody want to leave y'all information with me, anybody want something, if anybody say, yo, you know, I want to. I need a job up here. I mean, I got connections up here. Um, I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but y'all may be seeing me up north a little more, and I might be calling on some of y'all. But if y'all say, yo, I wanna come down south, you know, I wanna move to Atlanta, I wanna move to Charlotte, I got connects, you know? If y'all have somewhere y'all can pitch yourself to lay y'all head, I can help y'all get a job. We're cold. <laughs> <laughs> what do you say? You want to go somewhere colder than this in New York? You want to go to Montreal? You want to go to Canada, Toronto? I got connects up there too. Culturally, we freehand cooks. That's a blessing and a curse. But I also had to learn, because I had some consultant jobs back home, to say, you know what? I'm making a recipe by yourself on them little scales, little digi scales. You put that little scale next to you, and before you drop something into that pot, you put it on that scale, you write it down, right? And say so you say, all right, it needs more garlic. Before you put the extra garlic in there, 
you put it on that scale and you write it down and then you add all of those additions that you might have added to the initial um, recipe you add you know let's say I had two grams of garlic I add another gram of garlic and then you got your recipe because when you taste like damn because I've been there like man I cannot replicate XYZ like I did the last time this barbecue sauce I made it ain't the same say yourself you're doing a dish you're like yo I want to really make sure that I, I want to do this dish and I want it to I want it to taste XYZ or, or whatever have get, get yourself a little digi scale and when next time you're making something you say you know I want to jot this down every ingredient put on that scale and write down how much it was because that's how that's how I mean I'm I freehand cook and my culture culture food for me is nothing I mean we like you saw, you saw us yesterday right I wanted to see y'all see the visual what do y'all see the visual but when it gets to like that, just get yourself a low scale and make sure before you put even a drop of oil in that pot, put it on the scale.